Hey guys, uh, welcome once again to another video. This time we've got uh, a guest. Uh, I'll just put him up on camera. Uh, there he is, Zane Maxwell. Um, and we are doing a taste uh, tasting of his uh, Strat Memorial Day brew, uh, which was the Strat Amarillo Smash. And uh, i got to say, uh, this was absolutely done by the seat of your pants because uh, Zane just had a knack that day he didn't uh he didn't measure out this and measure out that he just went oh a bit of this bit of that bit of this bit of that she'll be all right and yeah. today we have got uh because he bottled well i bottled it for him because we, we did it around here but um uh, you know we've got um uh the uh the brew in hand and that's my green screen effect that's making that bottle look a bit odd Okay, so I'll crack the bottle. Oh, nice hiss off the top. Yep. Yeah. Nice hiss. And let's pour her up. It's a nice, clear-looking beer, I tell you what. Yeah, it's not too bad, actually, eh? Um, because what uh, grain did you half, use? It was, a, it was a half batch with 100 grams of hops. So. What, what grain was it? Uh, the Diabfields American Ale. Oh, my God. Would you look at that? And I poured mine up bloody, what, five minutes ago, and it's... Wow. Cool. That's, that's quite good, eh? For a smash, eh? For no extra malt, you know, extra um, specialty malts or anything. Yeah. That's good. Sorry, I, I did ask. What what grain was it? Was it Gladfield's Pale Ale or American Pale Ale? Gladfield's American Ale. A big Gladfield's American Ale. Oh yeah. I'll do a little little flyby on my little pillowy. It almost to look at it, you'd almost think it was like Vienna malt because of the not quite crystal clear. You know what I mean? That Munich or 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 Vienna malt has that sort of haziness to it. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, oh mate, and and I don't know how much of the rest of that bag of hops you wanted to dry hop it with, so I just dry hopped it with the whole lot. Bang on, bang on. <laughs> I just, I just thought, fuck. There's no point leaving thirty grams out. We might as well whack it all in, do a zane, and just smash it all in there and and see yeah. what we get at that's the end right. of it. And it. That's worked mint, I think. I tell you what, that I have to be honest is the most, the most pronounced I've ever had Amarillo before. Yeah, and no, I have to agree with you actually. Because Amarillo is not one that really has, you know, it's got to be, it's it's got to be in bucket loads for you yeah. to have it stand out above sort of like Cascade or or Centennial or or anything like that. It's a very subtle hop, but this is, you know, it's it's right up there. It is, yeah. And, um, anyway, cheers, mate. Put your yep. glass up against mine. Yep. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Cheers, everybody. Cheers to Strat. Yeah, cheers, cheers to Strat. Yep. Mm, yum. I tell you what, mate. That... See, didn't I say to you, did, did I not say to you when we were brewing that day, did I not say to you when you were chucking this in and chucking that in, didn't I say to you, I said, mate, you'll be bummed if this turns out to be a cracker because you haven't got a, an official recipe. And, right. you, and you said, ah, it'll be all right. You know what, remember what I said? Then we're going to have to go back to... Um, to back and save and get one of those peanut butter and raspberry yeah. or whatever that peanut butter and jam. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what, 
you put me onto a lovely beer that day because I've had that peanut butter one since, and I tell you what, the the trick is, you've got to let it come up to nearly room temperature for the peanut butter to stick out. Otherwise, it's lost in there. You pretty much get a mix of what the fuck is this? It's nice, but I can't pick out what what I'm getting. But when it warms up a wee bit, it's like any craft beer, I reckon. You know, if uh, after they warm up a little bit, they become quite, um, you know, quite uh, pronounced uh, aromas and flavours. Yeah. No, I, I'm enjoying that. And I'm sure, I'm sure that if Strat's, <laughs> if Strat's looking down on you, mate, he'll be saying, well done, Zane. Yeah, you thanks, know. Strat. Wouldn't have done it without you, mate. Probably wouldn't have done this brew day if it wasn't for that strap. And, um, yeah, and we got a bloody, well, i got a, a jug and a glass. <laughs> yeah. So I'm happy. We've got a decent amount of it. I, I, tell, you, I tell you what, Zane. Yeah. You, did I tell you the other, we can edit this bit out if necessary because it's off topic, but did I tell you the other week that I put down a raspberry wheat? Yes, yes, you did. Cause oh, you said you, my freaking God. It's in... You gave me a, we had a little sample from the trial jar. Yeah, we that's right. right. We tried it. Yeah. yeah. yeah that well, nice. it's on tap now. And I tell you what, you know that slightly tartness you can get with raspberries if you haven't got any sugar added? Yes, yes. It's got a touch of that, but not too much. And it's carved up, it's clear, it's it's in keg number four. So when you've got a free weekend, you know, without the kids or whatever, you know, we'll we'll organise it and you come over, mate, because I'm telling you, you're going to love it. It is a really, really, really nice beer. I mean, and this here for... Yeah. Considering it's just a single malt, single hop, you know, yep. variation, it is. Two kilos, it's two a, kilos of it's American a stunner. Ale hops and 100 grams of hops. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and what did we end up with? About nine litres or just shy of nine, wasn't it? Uh, well, I bottled up seven and a half. Seven and a half, well, yeah. Yeah, because there was five bottles which were a litre and a half each. Yeah, so... But good, having huh? said that, because because it was done in that vessel, I was unable to, you know, fully get every last bit out. So there probably would have been another maybe maybe a th couple of 330s or a 750 maybe, you know, or even one 330. I'm actually freaking surprised you bought it for me. I was going to come and do it, and you're like, oh, no, I've already done it, mate. <laughs> yeah, I remember you saying, but no, because I'm very methodical about, you know, like as soon as it's ready to be bottled or kegged, it needs to be so that it, the oxygen doesn't get a chance to get in there because I just actually read a thing on, you know, do you, do you subscribe to the YouTube fella Bobby from New Jersey? He he owns a home brew I think I think I do, but like, has he not put something out for no, a long time? No, he hasn't or? put anything out for a long time, and he put something out about a month ago, and oh. he basically showed how he had, for cold crashing, to stop... You know when you cold crash, right, your earlock goes in reverse? Yeah. And yeah. you start sucking oxygen back in. Yeah. Well, what he did is he came up with a, um, a device which is basically a plastic, a, a, you know, special plastic, whatever, a food-grade plastic or whatever, bag that a tube goes from his fermenter in, into the plastic bag, then out of the plastic bag, it goes down into a jug. So in other words, that plastic bag fills up with CO2 when oh, it's yes, fermenting yes. so that when it when it sucks back it only sucks back about half to a liter of co2 or oxygen and if oh, you've what? got a liter bag of co2 sitting there buffering between that and the outside oxygen 
then yeah. all you're going to suck back in, it, the bag's going to get a bit of, wa- uh, you know, um, s- star sand in it. Yeah. But because it draws from the top into the fermenter and then from the bottom it goes down into the jug. And so it basically draws back the expelled CO2. Oh, nice. So yeah. it doesn't get any oxygen in there. And I thought, what a clever idea, because you, all you're doing is blowing that CO2 out into the atmosphere. So if you can capture it and then have that when you cold crash go back into your fermenter, you've got no chance of it oxidising. And that is what I need, because yeah. my set... Oh yeah, I oh, know. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> my setup is um, I I ferment in one fridge and I cold crash in the other. But if I've got if I if I'm done fermenting and I still haven't emptied a keg to get the cold crashed into cold crashed uh, beer into a keg, then I turn the fermenting fridge into a cold crashing fridge, and I'll have yeah. two cold crashing. And sometimes the 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 uh, secondary, you know, the cold crashing fridge can have something in there for a month. Yeah, cold crashing, you know, and it's like I've had, I've had about three beers in the last uh, two years that have that have oxidised, and I've couldn't yeah. for the life of me figure out why. And as soon as I seen that video from Bobby from New Jersey, I was like, oh my god, that is exactly what's been happening with mine. Cool, because yeah, the last time it happened to me was actually my last time I brewed this bull strat was an Amarillo smash, and I did the same thing. But I had a, I had a like a, <laughs> again another sort of homemade vessel. <laughs> it was a um, ten liter bucket, but a food grade one. Yeah. But I just snapped the lid on, like it had no hole in it, so I thought it would seal, and it did, and everything, you know, kind of, like the bucket sucked in and stuff when it yeah. was cold crash. But obviously, as soon as I opened that lid, it just sucked yeah. in the frickin' air. Yeah. yeah, and that's where it's come. But anyway, I'll tell you, I don't know if you've seen me uh, a couple of years ago when, we're, when I was in Ashburton. I came up with this brainstorm, and it was similar similar to what you're talking about with the bag. It's like you get a 1.5-litre bottle, right? You put two holes in the top, so you have your blow-off tube going into this one. Yeah. Right, and that can go right to the bottom, and then you have another blow-off tube coming up into here, into another another little, like a little bottle. Yeah, like a little with bottle, star sand in it, and that's got the star sand in it. So then, yeah, basically you get the CO two going into the, this bottle, like a little chamber. Oh. But also, if you have a blowout, you get the yeast in there, and if you've got this sanitized, you can. It's like top cropping the yeast. You can catch the yeast in here and use it for a thing. So that was my original idea. We're catching the yeast. But it would also catch the CO2. Yeah. The only, I, I would say that would actually do exactly the same thing as Bobby's idea. The only difference is the bag would be a little bit better because it's more malleable. You know, it's yeah. more flexible than, you know, you've got a plastic bottle that's formed into a shape, whereas a plastic bag, you can screw it up into a little wee ball, you can blow it up into a big bag. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll yeah. easily f- inflate and deflate, whereas a bottle will have a little bit of resistance when it's yeah, deflating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hear you. But, yeah, but, but it's the same idea. Yeah, sort of idea. It's the same idea. And, like, you know. Catching the yeast, and, and it would have that CO2 bubble over it, that CO2 blanket on top. So when you're. Yeah. Just, Put it up. You, you're pretty safe to put it in the fridge or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, no. Nah, but that's that's genius, eh? With the bag, yeah. When you think about it, yeah, because it can come in and out. Yeah. But no, this is good. This is good. This is a real craft beer. Eh? It <laughs> is. It absolutely is, mate. I have to be honest with you. If I had a brood just for myself, if I had decided to make an Amarillo smash and I did this exact, this was my result. Fuck, I'd have been happy as hell. I would have been really quite chuffed with that because... We had, a lot, we had everyone around the world watching us too, didn't we? Yeah, we that. did, we did. Yeah. And Stop as it back. as it turns <laughs> out, as it turns out, you guys from around the world, uh, 
is the result. Uh, okay. it's, it's a winner. <laughs> it's an absolute freaking winner. Chicken yeah, dinner. Yeah, second one.